Okay, next up, we're gonna be looking at the student T distribution table itself. And in order to do this, we need to notice that when you're looking at your student T distribution table on page 586, it's a directional test. So we have either a one tail or a two tail. Now keep in mind, unless otherwise specified, you're gonna do a two tail test. So when they're not giving you any specifications, we err on the side of caution and do a two tail. Um, however, we usually prefer to set up a problem to solve for a one tail test. So let's take a look at the distribution table. So here are, is the T distribution table uh, graphed out. So when we're looking at this, uh, if you were looking at your T distribution table, this is the shapes of the graphs that those distributions would produce. Notice that unlike the Z distribution table where we have one shape for all values, right? We actually have a different shape for each different sample size, okay? So if we're looking at here, you can see uh, when we're looking at this, our student T distribution with an N of three being the yellow line, or our student D distribution of N equals 12 with a sample of N being the red line, okay? So keep in mind, they do have the same bell-shaped curve as the normal distribution. However, the important differences here is that uh, with the smaller sample sizes, we're gonna have a wider distribution or a wider variability, okay? So if we notice, we look at our distribution uh, for n equals three with a yellow line, we notice it's wider than the one for n equals 12, which is the red line, okay? So as the same, notice also, as the sample size gets larger, right? So our standard norm, notice how it gets closer and closer to our standard normal distribution as we can see here in the blue line. So it gets closer to the standard normal distribution, okay? So this graph right here should give you a good visual of what's happening with the T distribution table when we use it. Uh, and that is why sample size, uh, when you're looking at this, notice you have to have a degrees of freedom for using the T distribution table. That's because each of the distributions has a different shape given the sample size. And again, remember, the area under the density curve is comparable to the proportion or the probability, right? So that's our probability connection with our area and our probability. So the change in the shape under the density curve matters a lot. Now let's, so uh, when we're looking at this, notice also the T distribution table is designed to be more conservative with smaller sample sizes, okay? So it makes a more conservative estimate. Uh, and the reason when we're looking at that is keep in mind when William Gossett was designing this, if you are uh, a brewer and you're deciding whether to send a batch out for packaging and sales, think about what type of error you would rather make. Would you rather discard a batch that was good or do you want to package and sell a batch that was bad? Well, you'd much rather discard a batch that was good. Um, so thus, that is the more conservative estimate. Packaging and selling out a batch that was bad is very bad PR. You're going to have to recall it. Um, you're going to have unsatisfied customers. So this reasoning behind it, we can see why when we have smaller sample sizes, our T-distribution table is going to be making more conservative estimates for the probability of an event. Okay. Now also notice when we're looking at these, as this distribution table, as our n gets larger, see our n of three, again with our yellow line, and then our n of 12 with our red line, of course it gets closer and closer to the standard normal distribution. That's again because of the central limit theorem that we looked at previously, okay? So we can see that central limit theorem affecting playing out here in our t distribution table. Okay, now also we're looking at our t distribution table. Keep in mind that we're gonna have a mean of, of the, for the distribution table itself is t equals zero, okay? And it's gonna have a standard deviation which varies by sample size, okay? So notice again, when we're looking at our standard normal distribution, our standard deviation was always equal to one. In the t distribution table, the standard deviation is gonna differ. It's always gonna be different for each sample size. So our mean's always zero, but our deviation um, changes by sample size, but it's always greater than one. And indeed, that's what you can see here again in this graph that we're looking at. All of them, notice, have the mean centering in on the zero, but notice the distribution, the standard deviation is different. That's why with an N of, of three, it's more broad. That's the reflection of the standard deviation stretching out that distribution. Okay, now keep in mind, similar again when we were using the Z distribution table, just as we could take any value of X and set it equal to a value of Z without changing the relative distance between the mean and the value, right? So here's an image of that that we've used before back when we were working at the Z distribution table. Remember, we would take my value of X 
and say, what is the corresponding z value for that x so that I can then go use the z distribution table. We can also convert a, convert a value of x to a t distribution with a mean of zero, again, without changing the relative distance between um, the relative distance for the values, right? Keep in mind that the distance along the distribution is what corresponds to the area under the density curve, right? So the area under the density curve, notice whether I have my, my x value um, or my corresponding z value. Notice that the area under the density curve is the same for both of them, whether it's on the measurement scale or the z scale. And of course, that's what we really care about because the area under the density curve is what corresponds with our probability. Okay, so it's the area under the density curve that we're focused on, and that has to do with the relative distance between the mean and any one value. Okay, so again, this is a core concept. If you need to, stop the videos here, come back and think about this, go back and through and listen again, and get it into your notes so you understand why we're using, why we can convert to a, Z, a T distribution table, and how some of this is similar to a Z distribution table, right? Because we're converting an X. Now we're converting it to a corresponding t value, not a corresponding z value. But in both instances, it does not change the relative distance between the mean and that value. And thus, what affects to the distribution um, along uh, the scale, only in this case now we'd be using a t scale, right? Um, and how that relates to our area under the density curve and thus our probability, right? Okay. So now that we have this set, when we're looking at it and keeping in mind again, of course, that the devi uh, standard deviation is always going to be greater than one, 